Hello, everyone. Um, so you uh, are here to uh, listen to Federica and Domenico uh, talking about Zoe extensions in IBM uh, Z workload scheduler. Uh, this is session 3AG. Um, the any questions you have, if you put them in the chat, that would be good. They uh, they will watch the chat uh, and decide when to uh, uh, respond to those questions where it seems appropriate. Um, thank you for attending. The feedback um, would be appreciated uh, at the end of the session, just to uh, give us some information that we can use when we're planning next year's conference. Um, and I think uh, the other thing just to remind you about is uh, to show your appreciation for our speakers by generating, by generating, no, by donating generously, <laughs> new words, making them up as I go along. Um, so uh, our charities this year are the RNLI, the Lifeboat Association, and Guide Dogs for the Blind. Um, and uh, for every pound you donate, uh, you will receive a raffle ticket. There is a little process you have to go through to uh, take your receipt uh, for that process, but um, uh, good luck. <laughs> and uh, without further ado, I shall hand you over to Federica and Dominica. Thank you, Anna, for the introduction. <clears throat> good morning, everybody. I am uh, Domenico D'Arterio, I'm an IBM the product manager for the Z automation products, including IBM Z workflow scheduler. And I'm sharing this um, session with Federica, she's from HCL Senior Technical Sales. And we will give you, I will give you an overview of what Zoe is, why we joined this uh, open source project, we as IBM, but in general, why the open project community created this uh, open source project, and then uh, we will go more in deep on the uh, extensions that uh, IBM Z Workflow Scheduler offers uh, on top of Zoe, and Federica will deliver a demo of, the of those extensions. So during the session, feel free to um, ask questions in the chat. We will answer at our best, either during the, the session or at the end. So <clears throat> let's start from the story. Mainframe was created 55 years ago. And believe it or not, there is still code written then that still runs unmodified. Do you remember that Mainframe had the Apollo program to put humans on the moon in 1969? So there is a lot of story in Mainframe. There is a lot of things that are still running as they were at the very beginning. In the modern Mainframe, uh, Mainframe was given us dead when I joined IBM in 1999. It was given as gone. After 22 years, uh, still 70% of the world data are stored on mainframe. And uh, as you can see, some numbers, 25 of the world's top bank use mainframe. And even in terms of power, uh, everyone knows Google and everyone possibly use Google every single day for a search and Google is able to do 68,542 search every second globally. On mainframe, you can see how many transactions run in the same time. So mainframe is uh, evolving, evolving in terms of pervasive encryption, security, stability, and is still center in the main, uh, let's say, business critical uh, processing of not only financial institutes, we know even uh, um, retail or airlines or hotel chain, let's say, where you have something that needs to be secure, quick, you usually use the mainframe. So at this point, why Zoe was created? What is the problem that Zoe wants to solve? I say the, the open mainframe project uh, started this project already a few years ago, but what was the, the reason for uh, looking for this kind of interface and, and uh, framework? Well, the, the first uh, reason why 
Zoe was created uh, is because uh, currently or before Zoe, development and operation team to interact with the frame were in front of multiple interfaces. Every one of them with different uh, skill required uh, and uh, sometimes the skill required to interact was not even easy to uh, acquire. Now, many mainframe experts uh, are on the platform since many years and they are used to TSO or SPF panels. They are able to code in Rex or to, to write a JCL and to check it. By the way, from time to time, experienced people are retiring. Uh, new young talent are joining your companies and for they, they are not used to those kind of interfaces. They can be used to Eclipse, but less, or Unix system services, uh, let's say files. They can be less used to data set or to the traditional mainframe interfaces. And it causes, uh, let's say, a long period for training them, a long time to have them effective on the platform, and even possibly uh, create some frustration in those uh, young talent. So I say that the um, Linux Foundation created this uh, project, uh, the first open source project on mainframe. The initial contributors were IBM, Rocket, and CA, now a broadcast company. And, and what was the, the vision of Zoe? And you can see all the information about Zoe in the website, www.zoe.org. So the, the vision statement since the beginning uh, was declining in three major, let's say, uh, area. The first one was to attract new people. Basically, mainframe has said that for uh, uh, people coming from the studies from the university, as I was uh, in 1999, is uh, seen as a black box, something complicated uh, that is uh, difficult to integrate uh, with the rest of the IT environment, so every cloud uh, applications and so on. And it's even uh, difficult to, to learn. So the second statement was about reducing the learning curve. The objective is to improve the productivity of people that uh, uh, start interacting with mainframe, start working on the mainframe. And the Zoe project initiators, let's say, wanted to uh, give a cloud-like experience even when you interact with the uh, with mainframe. And finally, they wanted to simplify the architecture in the integration with uh, uh, other application running on distributed or cloud system or whatever, improving the co uh, coexistence, but mainly even, uh, let's say, respecting and uh, evaluating the investment that you made uh, over time on mainframe. So what Zoe is, Zoe is a framework and it has basically four components available as the Zoe framework. So if you get the open source framework, you will get the Zoe API mediation layer that is uh, basically two components. It's a set of REST API, so standard REST API that allows you to um, interact with the system, ZOS system, as well as uh, JS, MDS, and Unix system services. So those set of API, of REST API, are provided out of the box as part of the Zoe API mediation layer. On top of it, there is even, the, and they are collected in the um, in API catalog that discover even other REST API that are available on the platform. Then the power of Zoe is the extensibility. So um, many vendors can extend the Zoe API mediation layer, adding their own API to interact with a single product or services or whatever that is running on mainframe. The Zoe API mediation layer provides even the uh, authentication capabilities, uh, so you can uh, standardize even the authentication to work with the API provided by Zoe. On top of the REST API provided as part of the Zoe API mediation layer, in the framework, there are three major components. The first one is the Zoe API, Zoe application framework, that is a, a web UI 
completely web, no Java prerequisite. It runs in a browser and it provides, uh, as you can see, an emulator for the uh, 3270 panels, but even uh, a more, let's say, modern view of the uh, resources on M3. The Zoe applic application framework provides uh, three major app or plugin, one for uh, Jazz, so you can, and it is called the Jazz Explorer, and through it, you can manage job in Jazz in an interface that is more uh, modern and user-friendly for people that are not used to, to mainframe. It provides an Explorer, so another app to interact with MBS, so you can have a tree with the data set and the data set members, and you can edit them directly in this uh, web interface. And it provides even a Unix system services explorer. Again, every component of Zoe is extensible. And so, for example, as IBM, we provide uh, extensions to the Zoe application framework for the Service Management Unite, the IT operation UI. We provide extensions for uh, um, the monitoring uh, with the Service Management Explorer and even the Workload interactor, Interaction Navigator provides the, the web UI as, as a Zoe application framework plugin. And it is true even for other vendors. So every component of Zoe is extensible. The second component that is built on top of the API, so interacts with the API to uh, provide the features, is the command line. And it is uh, quite useful to integrate uh, um, in your script or in your DevOps chain the commands that you want to uh, run against, uh, again, JAS, MBS, or Unix system service uh, on the main frame. Those are the commands that are provided out of the box from Zoe together with some ZOS commands. And again, it is extensible by the different uh, software vendors. And finally, it provides even a, a Visual Studio Code extension for developers called the Zoe Explorer. There is a website where you can check every time the metrics. Uh, I collected them one week ago. And as you can see, the, the command line downloads was the highest out of the, all the components. You can get there even uh, how many Slack members there are on the specific Slack channel for uh, Zoe, how many GitHub contributors and Zoe conformant products. The Zoe conformance is an important uh, part of the Zoe project. So as I said, every vendor or whoever can contribute to extend Zoe with specific extensions for one or another component. But what is the uh, value and what is the, the quality of those extensions? So the Zoe Open Project uh, community created this uh, conformance uh, project. And so you can certify your extension against uh, a checklist, let's say, against the uh, uh, criteria that are defined. And if you respect those criteria, you can get this uh, Zoe conformance uh, badge, let's say, Zoe conformance certification. So the Zoe conformance uh, is a, something that guarantees the users of the Zoe extensions about the quality of the Zoe extensions. Now you can say, OK, everything is good, great. Uh, it's a great framework. I can use it in my environment. By the way, I am a mainframe. I'm not used to use, let's say, open source that is not supported uh, in my production environment. And this is why IBM already in March last year uh, made available an IBM Z distribution for it. So, so uh, the final objective is to make the Zoe open source available to a trusted IBM channel, providing uh, uh, entire support for IBM products that use Zoe and offering IBM support on Zoe for customers that want to extend Zoe. So basically, there are two flavors of this uh, IBM Z distribution for Zoe. For the IBM products that leverage Zoe and extend Zoe, it is a free of charge that you get even the customer support from IBM for the IBM Z distribution of Zoe. On top of it, if you are interested in getting the support from IBM for Zoe, for your use of Zoe, 
without any, let's say, IBM product that extends Zoe, you can uh, have it, uh, obviously, at that point, it's not free of charge. Anyway, the, the, the final goal is to provide support for this uh, open source framework so you can use it really even in production without any, let's say, concern. Now, let's move to what are the uh, workload scheduler extension of Zoe. I say that every product can extend every component uh, with the IBNC workload scheduler. We focused on extending the uh, Zoe API mediation layer. And so we have a set of REST API that were available already before, but now are even available as part of the Zoe API mediation layer. And for this extension, we got the Zoe conformance uh, certification. And we provide even uh, since uh, April last year, an extension for the common line. So there is a set of commands that you can run through this extension of the Zoe command line to interact with the IBM Z workload scheduler. And we will see more details in the next couple of slides as well as in the demo that Federica will uh, provide. So in terms of REST API, there are two major group of REST API that are available as part of the Z workload scheduler. The first group of API are the API that allows you to make actions on database resources. The actions that you can uh, um, implement that you can issue are listed here. So you can add, update, or delete a resource in the database, as well as you can retrieve information about resources in the database. You have uh, an API to retrieve the list of resources, uh, as well as uh, you can retrieve the details of a specific resource based on the name or the specific ID of the resource. The database resources on which you can act on are the job stream and the job, so applications or operations. You can act on the workstation, calendar, period, special resources, variable table, run cycle group, even triggering, and operator instruction. So as I said, on all of them, you can take the action, so you can retrieve, and the output is a uh, um, provided in a JSON format, so it's easy to even to parse the output and to create, uh, let's say, automation, for example, or to um, have them integrated in a library cloud application. The second group of API available as part of the workflow scheduler and available in the uh, Zoe API mediation layer are the API that enable you to act on the plan resources. So in this case, uh, you can add or update a resource in the plan, or again, you can retrieve the, a list of resources that are in the current plan, as well as retrieve a detail of a specific resource based on the ID or the name. The resources that you can act on are, again, job, job stream as for the database, but even specific information about critical jobs like the list or info about the, the risk level or the predecessor of a critical job in the network. And we added recently even the possibility to um, given a certain job uh, to get the information about if the job is part of the critical path or critical network of a critical job. Then you can even act on a job log on dependencies between job or job stream on workstation, and finally, on top of the actions for uh, acting on the uh, on plan resources, so you have even a few administrative uh, uh, actions available as part of the REST API in Zoe API mediation layer. Then, as mentioned before, we added this uh, plugin that collects all the uh, commands to interact with the uh, Workload scheduler, workload automation is the name of the group of the commands. And on this screen capture, you can see the help uh, online output for the Zoe command line. So through this uh, command line extension of IBM Z workload scheduler, you can easily execute WAPL commands, where WAPL is uh, a programming language available with the product to extend the product. You can get resources from database or job in the plan 
through the get command, you can list, um, so get a list of resources uh, either from the database or from the plan through the list command. You can change the status of a job in the plan. In the plan, you can submit a job stream in the plan, or you can even update resources uh, on a job in the plan. The command line extension for worker scheduler got the Zoe conformance, and uh, we are continuously extending it uh, um, based on customer input and what we see as the, the scenarios. At this point, unless there are questions, I would leave to Federica the podium to okay. deliver a demo. Okay, thank you, Domenico. Let me share my screen. Okay, uh, so I want to start uh, uh, talking about uh, a bit about the SAPI since this is uh, the framework that Zoe uh, integration for workload automation leverages. This is the dynamic workload console. You know where, that when you install the dynamic workload console, we install also another component that is called the the connector, it is automatically installed with the DWC. And uh, it is uh, this uh, component, the Z connector, that allows you to use REST API and even, even the Zoe integration. Uh, this is the website for the uh, dynamic workload console. Basically, it's an IP address with a port number and then console to, add the, to access the console. Then we have the Swagger. The Swagger is the documentation for workload automation REST API. Basically, it is the same website for the dynamic workload console, but you have to substitute console with TWSZ. So using the same IP address you have after you have installed your dynamic workload console, you can access the catalog of REST API that is available for IZWS. As you can see, we have a huge catalog of REST API. Basically, you can run using that REST API all the uh, commands, all you can run all the action that you can perform using uh, ISPF panel or other batch interfaces. We have REST API for modeling, so for acting on resources in the database. You have uh, REST API for the plan, so to act on job, job stream, critical job, resources, workstation in the plan. You have also REST API to manage the engine connection for the dynamic workload console, because once that you install the dynamic workload console, then you have to define the connection to the IZWS controller that you want to uh, use uh, in your graphical interface. And then we have a specific REST API for WAPL, the Workload Application Programming Language, that basically is a batch interface, a programming interface that allows you to run all the commands against IZWS that you can run using ASPF panel and other batch. And some of these features are also extended using WAPL. Um, okay, so I want to start uh, just uh, trying uh, a bit the, the REST API because this worker basically is something that you can use to try your REST API because you get back some information that then you can reuse in your script that you can run in, in Python, for example. So all the information that are provided in documentation for REST API can be used to automate some action, some script using REST API. As you can see, the Swagger has the DWC since it is based on the same technology, is using a different uh, naming convention for just for job and job stream, meaning that uh, for a ZWS uh, using a ESPF panel, you are used to use uh, uh, application and operation. Using the dynamic workload console, so the REST API, so Zoe integration command line, you will be prompted with the job stream instead of application. 
job instead of operation. For all the other information, uh, naming convention is the same. So for example, let's see, I'm interested on some meeting and job stream inside the plan. Okay, these are all the uh, REST API with all the needed that you can use in order to act on job stream on the plan. What I want to run, for example, is uh, um, to um, add an operation inside uh, the current plan. So for example, I want to run a post command. So I want to add operation. I want to run an add for job stream in the plan. Okay, this is the add job stream, the REST API to run an add job stream inside the current plan. As you can see, you can try the REST API. You have to provide the name of the engine connection. So your connection to the IZWS controller, in my case, this is. The plan ID for the uh, IBM Z workload scheduler is always current because we have just the current plan in place. And then hereafter, I have all, sorry, let me move down. Okay, you have all the possible information that you can provide to have the job stream inside the plan. Now, what I want to do is just adding the, uh, for example, let me add this uh, application. I know that I defined the varia. Yes, okay. I can remove all the other information since I, want, I don't want to provide specific uh, variable table time, but I can do this. So the REST API is very easy. I want just to add this application, this job stream inside the current plan. I execute the REST API. It's loading, it's, it's, it is performing the HUD. As you can see here, I have the response. The response is made, for example, for, from the error code. REST API has been successfully executed. I get back the uh, resource ID, the unique identifier of the resource, in this case is the job stream that I had in the plan. And in the current section, I have all the information that, that I can use in order to build a script. For example, I told you in Python, so I have all the information that I have to put inside my script, script in order to run some automatic action using REST API. So if I, for example, go inside my DWC, just to see that I had that this, uh, this job stream, it's loading. Okay, I have my engine connection again in DWC job stream. For example, I want to make a query just for the job stream that I've added. So it's demo uh, var. Okay, I can use the filter option in order to apply some filter to my query. I run my demo. I run my, my query and I get back the result that is uh, the job stream that I added to the plan. I just added to the plan. Uh, I'm sorry, but today I have a very slow VPN connection. Okay. As you can see, this is the job stream that I've just added to the plan. It has been executed. So for example, this is, uh, as you can see, I run uh, a query using the dynamic workload console. What I can do is also to run a query using the uh, REST API. So again, I want to run a post uh, method, HTTP method, in order to list the job stream in the plan. So I want to do a query about the job stream in the plan. So I run this REST API. Once again, I can try it. The information I have to provide again are the engine connection has in the DWC 
current that is the, the plan against which I want to run my query. Here, I have a lot of information. I can filter not only on job stream, but even on jobs in the plan. What I want to do in any case is to filter on the job stream. So I reach the job stream plan filter. I have to provide just the name of the job stream that I want to filter on. It is this one. I don't want to provide some other uh, information, so I can uh, remove all of these, but I can also specify some other properties for my query. Let me see, I built it uh, uh, in a good way. Yes, let's try. So I execute this REST API. As you can see again, REST API has been successful. This is the information that I can provide in a script in order to automate my request. And thereafter, I have all the information about the job stream. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know why. Let me check a moment the response. Let me go again inside the REST API. Job streaming plan filter, demo. This is my error, a type of error. Okay, perfect. Because basically I run a REST API. REST API has been successfully executed, meaning that there are not error in the REST API query. The error was my error that I didn't specify correctly the name of the job stream. So I get not information about the job stream I was querying. Now, let me run again. Okay. So here now I have the correct information because REST API again has been successfully executed. It was a uh, uh, correct by a syntax point of view, but now I specified correctly the name of the job stream. And hereafter, I have the information about my job stream. As you can see, once again, I have the unique identifier that I, I obtained by the REST API around before uh, when I had the, the, the job stream. I have this unique identifier that I, I can use, I can pass from one REST API to another one in order to do some filter, some, uh, some query and all the information about the job stream that I had inside the plan. Here in the response, I have all the properties of my job stream. As you can see, I have just one job stream, one unique identifier as I had for the query run by the, by the DWC. Another thing uh, for which you can use the REST API, for example, is uh, this other option, then I will pass to Zoe. As you can see, with the Dynamic Workload Console, we provide two default dashboard, uh, one for the Z environment, IBM Z workload scheduler, and one other default dashboard for IBM workload scheduler, that is the product running on open platform. You can uh, use the default dashboard, but you can also customize some dashboard uh, from your own in order to include information that you want to alight in your, uh, in your dashboard. The default one allows you to monitor how many jobs in error you have in the plan, how much available workstation or unavailable workstation, a general view of the status of the current plan. So how many ready jobs uh, or waiting or uh, blocked running successful in error. You have a lot of information here. And here you have also the critical job status. This specific widget is, for example, based on a REST API. I want to show you which is the REST API then I want to, okay. So about, uh, um, uh, in order to get information about, for, for example, about a critical job in the plan, this is the summary info for critical job in plan. Let's try this uh, uh, REST API. Again, engine connection, current plan. 
At this point, I don't want to specify some information. I want just to have back the information about how many critical job I have in high risk, no risk, potential risk. So I don't want to specify filter. I run this REST API. And as you can see, okay, REST API has been executed successfully and I have uh, one job in a risk status, no potential risk and four job in a risk. This is the same REST API that is uh, working for this widget. This is just to say to you that you can create uh, um, custom dashboard using REST API for workload automation, but you can also create a customized dashboard using leveraging REST API from third party application in order to include in your dashboard information coming from other application that expose REST API. For example, I remember that we have some customer that uh, created dashboard for their ticketing system and they created dashboard in order to filter on ticket open at for uh, workload automation for scheduling department. They created uh, some dashboard using leverages, leveraging REST API from this uh, ticketing system. It's very easy. You have just to provide the REST API and then you will have a widget based on this. So you can include information coming from workload automation, but you can also include information coming from all those applications that expose REST API. So this is just uh, a, a bit, uh, a short demo about REST API. Now let's move, move to Zoe. I installed the Zoe command line plugin uh, in my environment. And I can use Zoe in order to run some commands against IBM Z workload scheduler using just a very simple command line with very simple command. Now, which are the commands? This is just what I obtain running Zoe. Let me start with this, okay? So here I have all the application against which I could run command, including workload automation, the prefix is WA. So if I run Zoe WA, I obtain here the list of the command that I can run against IZWS. Very important is the uh, web help. So if I run, for example, Zoe dash dash help dash WB, uh, that web, <clears throat> I'm redirected to the web page where are explained all the commands, are listed all the commands that you can use for all these applications. Here we have the workload automation section with all the commands that you can use for so executing Wapple command, getting information about a job in plan or resource in plan list a job in plan, a job stream inside the database or job stream in the plan, the resource in the plan. You can also set the status of a job in the plan. You can submit a job stream or you can update a job or a resource in the plan. For each of these command, for example, let me take this one. You have all the details about the syntax of the command. So there are the required options, what you have to provide uh, in addition to Zoe WA in order to run, for example, the get job in plan command. So you have to provide the ID, that is the unique identifier. You have some other options that are not required that you can, you can add. At the end of each of these command, you have some example that you can also copy passing your Zoe command line, change and customize with your option, and then you can try and run them. So let's see together some scenario. For example, we can run some commands in order. I can submit a job stream in the plan that will be in error. One job in this job stream will finish in error. I will list 
the job stream in the plan to show you that the job stream that I have added is in error, then I want to list the job inside the job, this job stream to get the information about which is the job that is in error. I change the status using the, the set status for this job to complete. And then we will see again, which is uh, the, the status of this, of this job. So let's start with the command submit the job stream inside the, the plan. In this case, so this is the command I want to run. Each command for workload automation is made by Zoe blank WA and the command that I want to run. In this case is submit job stream in plan. I have to provide the name of the job stream. Let's move to my command line. So the command that I want to run is Zoe WA. Each time I want to submit job stream in plan. I have to provide the name of this job stream. The job stream ending in error is uh, this one. If I remember correctly, yeah. So let's see. I submit this job stream. As you can see, I get back again because this is uh, based on REST API. I get back the unique identifier of the job stream is here. Okay. Now let me list the job stream in the plan so that I want to, I will get back all the information about the job stream, even the status. So this is the command that now I want to run, list job stream, okay? And I can provide the name of the job stream. So let's move here. Once again, Zoe, WA, list job stream in plan as you can see the command is very easy so it's very useful uh, in order to um, for for some operator for example that have no access to the mainframe that are not used to a spf panel it's very easy to submit a command against idws using the zoe command line so list job streaming plan let me provide the name uh, the name is a test. Okay. Yeah, error. Okay, I get back. I get back all the information. As you, as you, as you can see, the unique identifier is the one that I just added, and I have the status of this job stream inside the plan. It is in error. In order to run this command, for example, the list command, you can also provide another information that is the time range. So you can restrict the time range in which you want to filter on this specific job stream in order to avoid it, to filter on a large set of job stream with the same name. Now I want to list for this job stream, the uh, job that is in error. So what I want to run now, if I get back to the documentation is list job in plan. The option that I can provide in order to use filters is the name of the job, but could be that I don't know which is the job that is in error. So for example, I can provide the job stream name because I know that the job stream is in error with a specific status list. So with a specific status, this job for me has to be in error. Let's move to run the command. Once again, Zoe, WA, list job in plan. Now I provide the name of the job stream because I know this. And this is test. Okay. And I want to provide status list. For me is error. Status list. Okay. I wrote it correctly or not. Uh, no, I didn't write it correctly. Let me review. Uh, Zoe WA. Oh, 
Ok, job in plan, the filter is job stream in plan test. This is my name, status list, error. Uh, ok, let me check again the command. So status list, error, yeah. Uh, oops. Let me a moment review this uh, filter, the job stream name, then I will run it again with the... Uh, okay, probably I wrote job stream in plain test. This should be correct, but in any case, uh, uh running the command to understand which is the job in error inside my plan i get back the information about uh, which is the job that i added in this application that is ending in error the name is uh, this one and what is important uh, from the list job is that i get back the unique identifier coming from the REST API for the job that is in error, because the unique identifier is used in the set status command in order to have to provide the unique identifier or the new status of the job for which I want to change the status. So I have to run the list of the job in error to get the unique identifier of the job for which I want to change the status. And the command to change the status is, as always, Zoe WA set status job in plan, the ID, that is this one, I can pass it in a script using recipe I using also script in the Zoe command line and the new status of the job and the job will be set to complete. It's running, it has been done. As you can see, the status changed. For example, if you want, I can also run some query using the the monitor workload. I have some problem with the, the connection at the moment. Okay, it's fine. So if I run a query about this job, this job stream, as you can see, the job stream, this is the one that I run, is now successful because I set to complete the status of the job that was previously in error. So basically using the Zoe command line, you can run a very simple command using, uh, uh, basing on REST API. REST API could be a bit uh, uh, difficult at the beginning because you are provided with a lot of uh, filters and uh, there are some specific uh, syntax that you have uh, to follow in order to have uh, REST API working fine. Using uh, Zoe command line, as you can see, you have a very simple command based on REST API, but you have uh, a very simple syntax to follow in order to run uh, to run your command against uh, WA. Um, from my hand, I finished my demo. I see that there are some questions in the chat. Um, let me move to see the question. Okay, no, there are not questions. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. I ah, think okay. it's just the problem of one person. Okay. Okay, we intentionally left 10 minutes at the end for questions. If there is any, I think you can either write the questions in the chat or possibly unmute yourself, I'm not sure. 
or sure you can type the demo the, the questions sorry in the chat it's okay i have uh, uh, allowed for the attendees to unmute themselves and ask direct questions Thank you, Dima. Thank you, Luciano. <laughs> so if you like the demo in the presentation, and obviously you, you can still ask questions if you have, Remember to submit the session feedback. Session is TAG. Yeah, we use this feedback, we really do, for uh, helping us to plan the next year's conference. I hope you're all enjoying this year's conference. And uh, thank you all for attending. And don't forget to show your appreciation by um, uh, donating to the charity and I will just lead a round of applause for our presenters. Thank, Thank you. And the, the presentation obviously is uh, available in the website and if you have uh, any question even later on you have our email address so you can always ask. Thank you everybody for joining for listening. <laughs> Okay. All right. I will end the session now then. Thank you very much.